one thing that our members talk about is that they will often go on multiple cycles of antibiotics on and off, on and off, mm -hmm. but they won't be able to uh, get the relief from yep. the pain and, and from the actual uh, lesions. Can you tell me a little bit more about some of the systemic treatments that, that dermatologists might consider? Yeah, and antibiotics are often a first line for sort of more mild to moderate disease. Um, we use them more like we would for acne. Um, but I would say as I've gotten more sophisticated uh, in my approach, I use them less and less, um, to your point. Uh, and I use different ones than I would normally have used um, and more in a flare kind of setting. Um, so they're not bad and they're not, um, they're, they certainly have the right patient population to benefit, um, but they are clearly for lots of people not gonna be enough. So um, I would say a therapy, therapeutic approach I thought was very underutilized that has been very useful as, again, I've learned more about the disease, um, is hormonal therapy. Um, and especially for women, um, really in the sort of mild to moderate category, um, kind of hormonal rebalancing, um, either through oral contraceptives or spironolactone, can bring people to really nice um, remissions that are really managed with very low medication doses for a long period of time. Um, and so that, that and uh, you know, I think historically this disease, um, there were not a lot of female dermatologists who were treating it, who really understood kind of all of these things. And so it wasn't a lot of surgeons were treating it and they just didn't kind of catch this until we started really doing it. And it, it is a really important tool. Um, then, you know, when you get to more severe disease, you really are managing inflammation. Um, and so for that, uh, you can do everything from some of the biologic therapies that are out there um, to other approaches. Um, the approved medication from the FDA is adalimumab, um, and adalimumab works. It's not uh, a panacea for everybody, um, but certainly was a really important advance in terms of getting sort of more modern medications that were better proven into um, our treatment approaches. Um, but now we're also in this incredible time where you know, there's seven or eight clinical trials going on. So in the next five years, we're going to have a whole new set of things um, that we can bring for people. And already we're, you know, doing all sorts of innovative things with those things. So can you tell me a little bit more about that, some of the upcoming treatments that you see on the horizon that you're particularly excited about? Yep. Well, and it's interesting, um, being a researcher who does clinical trials instead of in a laboratory, um, I've always felt, um, especially with some of the new medications that are very targeted, we learn as much about the disease by trying them in people and seeing what, as what happens. Um, so we've really started with uh, medications that have been proven effective in psoriasis and uh, started to bring them over, thinking that they may be useful in skin disease. And some early readout says that they probably will be, although we do tend to need higher doses to get uh, HS under control. Um, so, and, and I would say that general concept has kind of um, been the underpinning to my whole approach to HS was, you know, 10 years ago or so, a couple of things happened that kind of brought the disease to my radar screen. And I, I remember thinking one day, and I'd done, you know, a decade worth of psoriasis research, wow, everything I asked in psoriasis, I need to go ask in HS. The answers are going to be different, but the questions are all the same. And so then I just was like, go. <laughs> um, and so it's been great to figure out what things can we really take and apply from the other areas um, and what is really new, like some of this hormonal stuff um, that um, we need to get to. So it's a really exciting time. Um, and we're definitely going to make people a lot better. I'm very excited to hear that. So that actually was one of my questions for you, because what we are seeing among our members is that they will talk about how, you know, every month on the month, they will start to have a flare and they'll have an area that's inflamed or extraordinarily painful. And it will, you know, seven days later, start to ease up again. And then they know that they're going to have the same problem uh, like clockwork. Um, yeah. So do you work with gynecologists ever or do you do the prescribing for the contraceptives? How does that, how does that work? Yeah. Well, again, it's um, sort of how people have viewed oral contraceptives in dermatology practice has changed a lot. Um, uh, and again, it used to be that, you know, you need your pap smear every year. Many dermatologists didn't feel comfortable using them. Um, and that's completely shifted both how we monitor patients and people's comfort with level with this is completely changed. So 
you know, if I have a patient who I think that a oral contraceptive is appropriate for, I'll ask them about their pap smears. I'll ask them important questions about, have you had a stroke? Do you have, you know, clotting disorders in your family? Have you had migraines? Um, things that, would, are you a smoker? How old are you? You know, basic stuff. Um, uh, and then I'm very comfortable using them therapeutically um, in that setting, as long as I feel like, you know, we've got sort of the basis covered and someone else is monitoring their gynecologic care. If their GYN is doing the prescriptions, I'm also totally fine with saying, take this piece of paper with my suggestion <laughs> to your GYN and see if they like it. And if they're on something for a specific reason, like endometriosis, you know, then we'll have a collaborative conversation. 